So this problem doesn't belong in this section that we're about to do because it's rate of change. It really belongs in the previous section. So I'm going to go back to erase a change at the bottom. So we'll do one last example. This is really from uh, 2.1. So you probably have realized so far, I generally pick examples, problems that are easier than your homework problems. So why do I do that? There's so that we understand it. Well, there's a few reasons I do it. Uh, one of them is because I can't use calculator in class. That's so certainly why well, I'm not going to put numbers in here that are crazy. Uh, another reason is I want to communicate the idea with you instead of communicate 15 extra algebra steps. So if I do lots of extra algebra steps, the main point of what we're doing gets hidden. So you start looking at, oh, he's doing all this crazy algebra stuff instead of focusing on a rate of change. Uh, another reason is I want to build confidence so that not only do you understand the topic, at least at a conceptual level, but you have some idea that it's not impossible. And then you go home, do your homework, and usually those problems are more difficult overall. Some of them can be just as easy as the ones we do but frequently they're more difficult. A lot of times it just comes down to a number. Numbers are worse. So I'm pretty sure most of you had this problem, except it was probably a, like a plus two outside or plus something outside. So I'm going to leave that part off. So we'll do rate of change from, let's go, let's go three to four. All right, rate of change from x equals 3 to x equals 4. So our slope that's all we need, just the y's subtracted divided by x is subtracted. <coughs> square root 4 minus square root 3 over 4 minus 3. So that is 2 minus square root 3. So that's all we need to do for our rate of change from 3 to 4 just get our uh, basically slope equation or rate of change equation. That's all I used here. Now if I ask tangent line or a secant line, so one property of a secant line I just figured out. What property did I just get? Slope. I just got slope. <coughs> What else do I need to make a line? Y I could use a y-intercept. What is another option? So I actually only need one point at this right here because I already have slope. So I need slope and then one point. That point could be a y-intercept. It could be any point on the graph, really, as long as it's on the graph. All right, is 3, 4 point on the graph? Those are two x values. I could use either one, but 3, 4 is not an x, y point. So that's not a point. There's two choices. One of them is 3, f of 3. The other one is 4, f of 4. Let's use the one. So I chose 4 on purpose because that's a nice square root. So let's go ahead and use that guy. So we got 4, square root 4, which is 4, 2. I alternatively could have gone with 3 square root 3, but I don't want another square root jumping in here, so let's go with the uh, 4, 2. So we're going to use, so we got our slope, we have our point. The better one to use, we'll go with 4, 2. So we got this point slope form, or whatever form they call it. So we got y minus 2 equals. 2 minus square root 3 times x minus 4. 
So what's wrong with my notation? Yeah, 2 minus root 3, that needs to be grouped together. And depending on how you're answering, this could be the final answer. Most of us like to solve for y. Just add 2 to the other side. If you, depending on what form you want, this will be mx plus b form. So there's our y equals mx plus b form, if you're into mx plus b form. Nope. Sure didn't. So there should be another 4. Four, that should do it. There we go. <laughs> All right, so your slope won't always be a pretty number. Sometimes it have a square root in it, could have a pi in it, could have the number e in it. I don't think. Our problems won't have e in them because we don't generally do logarithms and exponential functions until calc 2. So you shouldn't see the number e until next quarter. So if e shows up, something, well, it might show up in a homework problem, but it definitely shouldn't show up on a quiz or a midterm. All right, so that was our secant line. What if I ask for a tangent line at the same point, 4, 2? Let's look for a tangent line at 4, 2. So we'll go same function at 4, 2. Now remember, tangent lines, you don't actually want two points. You want only one point for a tangent line. It's supposed to hit the function at one point. It may hit in other points, but that's just coincidence. So what do I mean it may hit in other points? Let's think of um, a cubic function. If I have a, let's say, a tangent line right here, that tangent line definitely hits the place where it's created where we got the slope, but it could incidentally have another place where it hits. This is different than, a, technically there, you could say this is the secant line between the two points I just circled. But that's coincidence right there. Uh, so tangent line might hit in other points, but specifically it hits in one point and has, an ex if I kept zooming in, this won't let me zoom in that far, but the idea is the curve the slope of the curve will be the same slope as a line right there. If I was on a real graphing utility, they would let me keep zooming in. And I'm pretty sure I did that on one of our examples. And we saw you zoom in super far, and it looks it pretty much exactly the same. Because that curve, the curve starts to flatten out as you zoom in. And it looks a whole lot like the line that's right next to it. So this is not the graph of square root x, so let's go ahead and get rid of this. So we got 4, 2 is our point tangent line, so I need to use a difference quotient. We're going to very carefully put in x uh, plus h. All right, there's the most common mistake. And in fact, let's keep going and see what happens when you make this mistake. So obviously, these are not equal here, because I screwed up pretty bad. But let's keep going. What cancels out? So the square root cancels negative square root. So we got h over h. And we get 1. This is generally what you're going to get when you make this mistake. 
why you're going to get this. What I actually wrote down, it was something, it wasn't the right something. What I actually wrote down was f of x minus h plus h minus f of x over h. So that's what I wrote down. I took the function f and then I added h at the end. So regardless of what f of x is, it's going to cancel out. You can see it's going to be f of x minus f of x. Cancel, cancel, h over h. You're always going to get 1 if you make this mistake. And then keep doing correct things afterwards. So if you get 1 for your difference quotient, you really want to question what you did. You most likely made this mistake right here. All right, so this is all bad stuff, which you won't do on your quiz. So let's do things the right way. So was anybody able to cancel the h in the denominator using algebra? H over 1. So I could write h over 1, or 1 over h. So I could rewrite like that, but the h, didn't, h is still there. It just moved over. Times both top and bottom by h? Um, no, I still have, then I'll have h squared on the bottom and h, extra h on the top. Oh, there we go. So sneaky trick right here. You multiply by conjugate divided by conjugate. So how would you know how to do that? You took precalculus. That was one of the five strategies for identities. Multiply by conjugate over conjugate. What we didn't ever use it for was in square roots. So difference of square roots. Have I used the word conjugate yet in this quarter? Yes. I did. I think you mentioned it. So what this does is it basically cancels out the top of the denominator. Basically, so let's look at conjugates. also known as difference of squares. So inside, outside terms cancel. You get AB minus AB if you FOIL it out. So that is how conjugates multiply. So multiply these conjugates together right now. And tell me what you get. There's still conjugates. Thing minus thing multiplied by thing plus thing. So multiply them out. Tell me what you get. A minus B. So that's another way you can use conjugates. So if you see uh, square roots minus another square root, you can multiply by conjugate. Now you can't just multiply by the conjugate, that's illegal in the math world, so we multiply by the conjugate divided by itself, because that is the number one right there. So that's how I can still say that that's equal to the step we just did before. So I multiply by one right there. So why did we do this? Because conjugates are going to work out really nicely. Square root x plus h times square root x plus h is just x plus h. Outside, inside, cancel, minus square root x times square root x. That's just minus x. Do not multiply the non-conjugates together. You're going to have to factor it back out anyways. So why is this good? For us, we got x minus x. That cancels out. So our x is going to disappear. So cancel, cancel. We just have h divided by h square root x plus h plus square root x. Now I can cancel my h's finally. So the bad h cancels the other h, the good h. What are we left with in the numerator? One. one. So you cancel division, cancels to one. Don't cancel it out to zero. You got one over 
All right, so the bad H is gone. So the any H's that are left, they're not bad ones. So the one that was going to make us divide by zero is not here anymore. So now we, still have an H though, so we do, but if this H is zero, does that make us divide by zero? No. 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 So we got there's most of the time. I think almost all the time there's still going to be an H around. It just won't be the bad H. Sometimes there could be more than one H. Would there be a hole in this function where X and H are both zero? I couldn't plug in X is zero and H is zero, and we'll see. We'll see what what the implications for that are. So the bad so one over zero. So our bad H is gone. Our smiley face. So now, our good H, you can let this one equal zero. I couldn't do it before because I'd be dividing by zero. So that would be very legal in the previous step to just say H is zero. I'd be having an undefined quantity. So we got one over square root X plus zero plus square root X, which is one over square root X plus square root X, or one over two square root X. All we need to do, this is basically our slope as soon as I plug in our x value. So I just put in the x value we wanted, which was 4. So this is our slope as soon as I plug in 4. So here is some new notation. It's a vertical bar which means evaluate that expression at x equals 4. So this notation right here. That means evaluate at x equals 4. So that's easy to do. 1 over 2 square root 4. 1 over 2 times 2 which is one-fourth. So our slope is exactly one-fourth. So tangent line. If we go mx plus b, I think we did the point slope form last time, we'll go with this one. This time one-fourth x plus b. What point can I use? So four is a number. What do I have to pair up with four to get a point? Two. So we're going to need our y value somewhere up here. So our y value is two. So we're going to use four two as our point. So tangent line passing through the point four two. So we got two is our y. One fourth x is four plus b. So 2 minus 1 equals b, b equals 1. So we, before we did expand the numerator, then combine like terms, and I'm pretty sure on this note, this lecture page, we did that right here. So I'll label this with an asterisk, 
So we did our, we foiled, and then we combined like terms and factored an H out and canceled. So that is uh, one asterisk right there, the example for number one. So we did that with an asterisk. Our second strategy, I'll put a double asterisk down here. So that's our double asterisk. So we did uh, multiply. Any square root minus another square root by conjugate over conjugate. And this was double asterisk. And the one I haven't shown you yet, add fractions with common denominator. And I'll put three asterisks, and we'll do an example of that right now. So there was a homework problem that was pretty much uh, not quite identical to the one I did, but very similar to this question I just worked through. You could guess, basically guess the slope by looking at how your decimals are progressing. And you might think, oh, that's going to a quarter. Like it's going to 0.25, for example. Or an eighth is harder to see, 0.125. So there are different decimals that uh, you can see that's going towards. But this is how to do it without using, uh, looking at decimals and how they're getting close to some number. So this is the actual algebraic way to do that. All right, last up, common denominator with fractions. So let's go and simplify the difference quotient of 1 over x function. So f of x plus h. So again, if you have trouble seeing, plugging in uh, anything other than x, all you have to do is use the box notation. It seems sort of stupid, but it works really well. So f of x is 1 over x. So f of a box is 1 over the box. So all I'm going to do is put x plus h inside the box. No more brain cells are required than that right there. No magic is happening. So again, not 1 over x with an h added on the end. Not OK. Uh, I, am, I generally give partial credit if I see this mistake. I usually don't have mercy because after this, everything is going to cancel out to a 1. So you make the problem pretty much trivial at this point. So that's the end of partial credit if I see that right there. If we ever get 1 on a quiz or a midterm, would you recommend going back over it? Or like, is that possible? Uh, like, we give a question with the answer 1 just to throw us off? <laughs> oh, I've probably done that before. I'm sure some of your classmates have answered with one, and that's their correct answer. Yeah, I try to make the answers overall reasonable. Like 347 over, you know, square root pi is kind of crazy. To occasionally it might be like that, but not not usually on a quiz or midterm. All right, difference quotient. F x plus h minus f x over h, one over x plus h minus 1 over x divided by h. All right, first thing to notice, we have a fraction of fractions, multi-story fraction. So what is one strategy? How, how can we avoid fractions of fractions? So reciprocal of the denominator. You have to be careful. What is the denominator? This is not the denominator where I circled. It's, it's a denominator, but it's not the denominator that I'm going to reciprocate. The denominator is just h down here. So I'm going to put some extra parentheses. You can even write h over 1, because that's what we're about to reciprocate right there. 
So you got 1 over h times 1 over x plus h minus, and I'm going to space this out a little bit extra. You will see why very soon. So our h is still bad. It changed forms a little bit, but didn't really change that much. How in the world am I going to cancel that h? Well, I already told you how, if you were paying attention. Add fractions of the common denominator. You could multiply by conjugate over conjugate, but then you're going to have fractions of fractions because you're going to have conjugate over another conjugate. That's going to be really bad. So we're just going to go add fractions with common denominator. All right, add those fractions with common denominator. Oh, it's time. All right, so do this. This is a middle school exercise. I don't want to give it away, but you can definitely finish this problem off with common denominator, add them together. And then remember, this is the bad H right here. That H needs to disappear at some point. So once you do some algebra steps, that H needs to disappear.